are at Tiffany's Diner on the Boulevard. Um, this this was a place that I would go to a, as a as a young person with with my parents and grandparents. I grew up in the Bustleton section of the Northeast, off of Welsh Road on Sharon Lane, and it was a clean, nice neighborhood. Um, wasn't rich, but I'd say it was a middle-income neighborhood. And it was, at that time, predominantly Caucasian. I think it's more diverse today. This was my grandparents' house, and this is the Somerton section of the city. We lived in Bustleton, which is maybe a mile. I was from a family of four. I was the oldest, and half boys and half girls. And we, we were, we did everything as a family. Mr. Brown. Hello. You are the same neighbors, because I remember that. That's yeah. That long ago, yeah. That's fantastic. Again, go back to work. Thanks Just for saying hello. There. Some people behind you, I'm one of them. Thank you. I appreciate Take it. Take care, sorry. I was very impressed with my dad. And he worked seven days a week. He had a small grocery store in West Philly. And I would anxiously await for him to come home at night. Sometimes, you know, 11 o'clock at night. When I was maybe eight years old, he started taking me to work on the weekends in his West Philly supermarket. Eight-year-old boys, you know, we're going through life, we're learning. And, um, you know, in the Northeast, um, people weren't, they weren't super rich, but um, they could take care of their families. They had, they had what they needed most of the, in most of the cases. Um, and that was one experience. And then we'd go to West Philly and um, pe people often didn't have what they needed. And, you know, I was in the store and I was helping people bag their groceries and I would see that people couldn't afford their whole grocery order and they even have to put stuff back. That stuff that you needed, they needed. They were the basic ingredients, nothing fancy. And I, it always bothered me that, um, especially as a little boy, you're like, why does this exist? Why does it have to exist? Can't somebody do something about this? Why can't people get what they need? And so a lot of my work is oriented around bringing healthy food that's affordable to every neighborhood. And uh, I like that part of my job. So this is my friend, we used to work together uh -huh. in Parkside, right? Yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> you probably don't know this, but a um, uh, long time, well, 50 years ago, I used to work in this store. Yeah. Yeah? You heard that before? Yep, I was like maybe eight years old, my Get dad. Yeah, my dad would take me to work. Yeah, oh good, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's where I learned the business. Mm -hmm. You know, I like how you said you like working with people. I was, I was explaining that, uh, if you like people, this is a good business. You never know who you need, because everybody has to eat. My grandfather was from Poland, and my great-grandfather was from uh, Russia. They started a little small grocery store as a way to make a living. And so I'm actually the fourth generation grocer. And my son, Josh, he's the fifth generation. Uh, Sandy and I, that's my wife, Sandy, um, we had four sons. My mom and my wife both make dinner and at the dinner table, we air what we did during the day. And, um, you know, there's dialogue and disputes and debate. And so I think the dinner table education is a very good system. It's, re it's very important to have dinner with your family. We re required our children, and my parents did as well, we required everyone to work at a young age. We brought them to the stores and we taught them to work. And uh, if they wanted something, they better earn it. Um, there was no, not a lot of handouts. That's the culture of the family. My grandfather's sort of common sense, love of people, sort of simple business principles or life principles that he taught my dad and my dad taught me and I taught my sons. These are good lessons. And a lot of times we try to use complex theories to solve our problems that only get us into more trouble. What people really need is to make a living so they can take care of their families. And it's as simple as that. When I look at our city, and it is a big city, and I recognize that um, it's harder to do, but um, I feel we kind of need a little more love in Philadelphia. And um, everything in the political world seems very cold. Um, when you go to City Hall, um, it's not a friendly place. And when you uh, often when you talk, or listen to some of the elected officials. I don't feel like that affection, that people care about me, that they love me, that they want me to be successful. I would like to change that. It maybe is not as tangible as a, a bill, but it's just as important.
We're in Philadelphia. Motherly love and sisterly affection. And where is it? Where is it in government? Let, let's show it. <laughs>